Hi, Mohammed Almala here. This is another unedited video of a cataract surgery. This is a mature cataract. This patient has already had uh, the eye prepped and draped. We have stereo strips holding back the lashes. We've just placed this uh, lid speculum. Let's speed this case up here a little bit. So we can see it's a white mature cataract. It does look, the capsule, uh, the capsule does look fairly tense here. And so we're going to use a 25 gauge needle to decompress the capsule. Here we're making the paracentesis. We're doing preservative free lidocaine. You can see the patient's moving around quite a bit during the surgery. Uh, I'm going to use Tripan Blue here. I'm just going to wait for the uh, nurse to hand that over. Uh, but looking at the capsule, it's important to recognize that not all white cataracts are the same. Some are going to be some capsules are going to be more fibrotic. Uh, this one looks like the cortex is quite liquefied and maybe under tension. And so there's going to be increased risk for getting an Argentinian flat sign. So we want to be very careful here with a capsule rexus. That's the air bubble going in. And this is the blue dye. And then I like to go ahead and put in the viscoat uh, directly. And we use that. That looks like some more topical anesthetic there, perhaps tetracaine. And I'm going to use biscuit here to remove the air bubble from the anterior chamber. I'm going to use my 0.12 forceps to stabilize the globe. And then I'm going to make my primary incision. This is a 2.4 millimeter keratome blade. I'm now going to go in with a 25 gauge needle. And I'm going to go directly through the center of the anterior capsule. And I'm going to aspirate. And that will help release any contents of the lens that may be under pressure. We don't want the lens to be under pressure because that increases the risk of an anterior capsular tear or the Argentinian flag sign. And we want to avoid that if at all possible. So we're aspirating here and we've aspirated some material. And now we'll go in with a cystotome and extend the anterior capsule opening. Once again, 0.12 forceps to stabilize the globe. Very important here that if the globe is stabilized and you feel completely confident, you can take your time doing this procedure. You do not want to feel rushed here or under pressure. That's some more viscose there to hyperinflate the anterior chamber and keep the anterior capsule flat. And now we're going in with the capsule rexus forceps and we're extending and making a nice continuous curvilinear capsule rexus. Very, very important part of the case. So that's done. We're happy with that. The cortex is liquefied. You can see the cortex is already starting to come out into the anterior chamber here. Uh, I'm just checking to see if the lens uh, spins here and it seems like it does. And now I'm going to go in with FACO. So white cataracts can be, of course, quite dense and sometimes they're not quite so dense. So here we can see that the outer edges are probably not that dense. They come out fairly readily with, uh, with FACO here. And my usual technique is to do a stop and chop. But we see here I, I make a pass and I don't really get uh, much of a crack at all. I'm having a, a hard time here kind of engaging this, this nucleus and getting it to crack the way uh, I do for my regular cases. The saving grace here is that the nucleus does look relatively small. You can see here that you can see the the red reflex there uh, both to the in the left of the screen and also inferiorly at times. But we're going to keep here working. This is 2x speed. So I am taking some time here to kind of figure out what's going on with this lens or this nucleus. One thing that will probably have been helpful here, and it's always nice to look at your cases so you learn from them, is to switch back to sculpt mode and make a nice groove and try and do a divide and conquer technique here. But in the middle of the surgery, uh, it feels like you're making progress. And so you, I continue doing what I'm doing. And here you can see I'm able to finally lift up the nucleus. And it does seem that this small part here, this very central nucleus is quite dense. So I'm going to need to use some longitudinal phaco here in addition to, to torsional phaco. But we are making progress and we're able to use our second instrument here to try and chop up some of that some of that lens. So not the most elegant case I've done uh, in terms of uh, FACO chop, uh, but nonetheless we do get the cataract out and we are making progress here. 
a very dense central part of this lens here. So slowly taking our time, removing this uh, nuclear material. Very good. We see there is some lens material there going around in the anterior chamber. I have some remaining lens material here to the left of the screen. So done with FACO. Uh, you can see there's really not much cortex remaining. Uh, I'm going to just slow down this part here. This is a Terry squeegee silicone tip on a cannula and we're going to use that to remove any uh, central cortical material that's still attached to the posterior capsule. We want a nice clear visual access for this patient that can have the best possible vision. Now of course here you can go in and do IA with the, with the irrigation aspiration handpiece and you can certainly do that to remove that cortex there that's in, that's in the fornix. And I will do that after I put the lens in here. So if you look at that, what I did there is I injected uh, my provis both to the left and to the right of the wound. And that did, I, use, I do that to free up any nuclear remnants that may be present. And you can see that there was a nuclear piece there that was still present. And so I went ahead and just irrigated that out or with the viscoelastic, I didn't irrigate it, but I used the viscoelastic just to fill the anterior chamber and that came out of the wound. So IOL is already in, this is regular speed, and we are using the IA handpiece to center that, that lens. And now we're going to use IA on viscoelastic mode to remove all the probis that's in the anterior chamber there, as much of it as possible. We can see that we've got quite a bit of cortical material here in the fornix. I'm now going to go in with my uh, with a lower uh, aspiration setting and remove that cortical material from the, the anterior capsular, from the capsular fornix. Now obviously I could have done this before I put the lens in, uh, but it's been my habit just when I don't have that much cortical material remaining to do it after the lens is already in place. That way I have the eye well to protect the posterior capsule. That's just a matter of style and what's your preference here. But you will see here that I do spend a little bit of time cleaning up the cortical material that's in the capsule of fornix. So let me just speed this up again a little bit. Now this is 2x speed again and we're, uh, we're going and we're just removing any of those little strands that may be present. We're spinning that lens around and by spinning the lens around it also helps to free up and mechanically remove any cortical material that may be hiding in the fornix. We're polishing underneath the anterior capsule there and we have rotated the IOL approximately 180 degrees. So there's some cortical material there that's bothering me. I want to get that out. But we are essentially done with the case here. We'll go back to uh, regular speed. Uh, we are irrigating the main wound and irrigating the paracentesis. For the main wound we're just we're just hydrating the the, corneal, the lips of the corneal incision and then through the paracentesis we're actually injecting, this, we're injecting uh, BSS into the anterior chamber and then we also hydrate that paracentesis wound as well and then we check the wounds make sure things are watertight. I have a lot on the cornea with my cannula tip to make sure that I like the pressure and that is it. So Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that uh, perhaps you may have learned something from this case. It's nice to watch your, your cases and your videos. What I would have done here differently in retrospect is probably uh, just go back to a divide and conquer mode since I couldn't get a good chop with this patient. But nonetheless, we got the cataract out, the mature white cataract. The patient had a great outcome with good vision. We've got nice overlap there, the anterior capsule over the optic edges. Thank you for watching. Leave any comments, any questions ways you would have done it differently. Thank you for, thank you for your attention.